Welcome to Biology 3301 Evolution. Uh, this course for Summer 2 2020 will be entirely online. It's asynchronous, meaning that you don't need to log in at any particular time each day. Originally, the class was scheduled to be held at 8 a.m. on Monday through Friday, but because of the unusual circumstances we find ourselves in, you won't be required to log on at 8 a.m., and the material will be available throughout the entire day. Now, there will be some material that you will need to do on a specific day, but like exams um, and reading questions, which are basically like attendance points or gimme points. So, so you understand how the course is going to work, what material you have available to you, and how you can do well in the course. Let's go through it. So when you log on to Blackboard, you will see this welcome page, this main page. So the first thing you have is a link to the syllabus and the calendar. And then a whole bunch of stuff that the university puts that's some useful, but you probably already know. But the first two important links are the first one, the syllabus, and then the calendar. So we're going to take a very quick look at the syllabus, and then we'll be going through that material just so you're familiar with what to, do, what to expect for the course. The syllabus lists um, course information, my contact information. The very best way to get in touch with me is via email. I'll be checking each weekday and probably once or twice over the weekend also. So you can contact me there. Now, I'm going to be holding uh, quote unquote office hours via Zoom at 7 uh, p.m. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But also, I have lots of other available time. So if that hour doesn't work for you, if you needed to set up a special session to ask questions, go over a worksheet, review for an exam, send me an email, and we can set up another session, and that's fine. But I will be there each Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 just to answer questions. Those are not required uh, attendance. You, there will not be any new material posted there, but I will uh, be answering questions and going over thing if, things if any student has a question. I think that 8 in the morning is great for getting up and getting going, but um, especially during this time when people are having kind of unusual uh, circumstances, I think the evening works a little better for most people. But again, if that doesn't work for you, just let me know, send me a schedule. So evolution is an interesting course. We do some advanced material, but there is also a very broad range. So we do a wide range of many different uh, subjects, which are, are uh, fall under the umbrella of evolution. And it just lists a few here. We'll be talking about all of these. And by the end of the course, you should have a very good understanding if you've kept up with everything about that broad range and how much biology is impacted by evolution. Now, on to how you will be graded. The main portion, 60% of your overall grade, will be exams. There are four total exams. Um, midterm exams, uh, sorry, there are five total exams, four midterm exams, and then a final exam. The midterm exams will all be administered online. You'll have 24 hours to take those. We'll look at the calendar here in a little bit so you can know the dates and, and make sure you're ready for when those come up. The midterm exams will be 50 multiple choice questions. Uh, our final exam is comprehensive. However, I will pull it uh, off of the previous exams. Now, that does not mean that you will have seen every single question on the final exam. Uh, because the way the midterm exams work is there are pools of questions. So I typically write anywhere from 80 to 100 questions for each of those midterm exams. So you'll see 60% or 50% of all of the questions. And so on that final exam, a very good portion, maybe as many as 70% of all of the questions on the final exam will be questions you've seen before. The other questions will be very, very similar. They might be a, a, a same concept, but you'll see a true false rather than a multiple choice or vice versa. So although you do need to take the final exam and it is comprehensive, it also will be uh, somewhat easier than the other exams because you will have seen at least half and maybe more of those questions already. Okay, so all of those exams will be weighted equally and will make up your exam portion of the course. Okay, the final exam is on Friday, August 14th. We'll look at the calendar here in just a little bit. All of the dates and everything you need is on the calendar. In addition, you also have, and I'll show you this once we get through the syllabus, you have this folder here called Daily Links that will uh, take you through each day by day all the things you need to do to be up to date. Now, some of those things you can go back and do at a later date. So if you miss a day, um, you won't necessarily miss everything, but you may miss a reading quiz, particularly at the first part of the semester. So let's look at the rest of the 
uh, requirements for the course. So each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, unless there's an exam scheduled for that day, you will take a quiz. The quizzes are administered on Blackboard. There will be a link in the daily links folder. In addition, you can find them here in the quizzes folder. It's empty right now. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, not empty right now. I'm going to make those unavailable for you. But um, those are just uh, old ones anyway. I'm going to be redoing those, so they won't give you uh, a whole lot of help anyway. But uh, the quizzes will appear here. After the quiz has been taken, a key will appear also um, after the availability date. So you will be able to um, uh, take those quizzes on the appropriate day. Now, quizzes will appear the day they are listed, early in the morning. And then, um, in addition, you will have one extra day to take the, the quiz. So if the quiz is on a Monday, you'll have until Saturday at midnight. Uh, to take that quiz. If the quiz is on a Wednesday, you'll have till Thursday at midnight. Okay, so just be aware of that. And um, uh, if you follow the daily links calendar, that will also help you with those uh, quizzes. Uh, the daily links has everything you need. If you keep up with that, you won't fall behind. Okay, we'll finish that up later. So in addition to exams and quizzes, you will also have five worksheets that are spread throughout the semester. The fir first worksheet I'll be putting up very, very shortly. It's due, I believe, sometime in the middle of next week. Uh, and there, those will be worth 25 points each and will uh, be due on the day they are listed on the calendar. Also, they'll be listed in the daily uh, links folders to help remind you. Uh, worksheets will also I'll be give, doing uh, I'll post usually a video of a short run through or a similar um, quiz I'm sorry similar worksheet just so you can see how to do it but you are also welcome to ask me questions I'm happy to go over with them if you're stuck on anything if you're doing it last minute trying to get it in that's probably not real helpful but if you plan a little bit ahead you can do that you're also welcome to I know it can be a little tricky if you would like to if you feel it's helpful you're welcome to work with other students I encourage that on the worksheets. However, even if you work with other students, you still need to turn in um, your own copy. Okay? If you turn them in late, it's 25% off for each calendar day they are late. So more than three days late, and you, you don't get credit for the worksheet. So please make sure that you keep up and get those turned in. Um, the last thing are reading questions. Now, reading questions are on the calendar, so you know when they're due. They will appear as links in the um, daily links folder. In addition, if you go to the main page of the course, the link will also appear here so that you can take uh, uh, that quiz. So that will be up uh, there in the announcements. It just is an automatically generated link to that also. Okay. So those four portions will make up your, your grade and they will be weighted as listed here. 60% of your overall grade will be the exams. Quizzes are 15%, worksheet are 15%, and the reading questions are 10%. Now, the reading questions, as long as you do them and turn them in on the day they are due, you will get full credit. So they're kind of an all or nothing thing. So you need to make sure you keep up, either look at the calendar or use those daily links folders to your full advantage. If you turn all those in, um, I, they're, they're open-ended questions. They don't need to be very, very long. I'll show you the first one here in just a little bit. As long as you put in a little bit of effort, a little bit of thought, just submit them, you'll get full credit. The quizzes and the um, reading questions, the lowest score will be dropped. So if you miss a reading question and don't forget to if you forget to submit it, that's fine, won't impact your grade. But if you do it multiple times, it will start to impact your grade. Now, as for quizzes, same thing. Your lowest quiz will be dropped. Now, excuse me, the first quiz you take, uh, which will be on Friday, July 10th, you can take that one as many times as you want. So you can redo it if you don't get a, a full credit, redo it, redo it. But all of the other quizzes, as it states here, um, all other quizzes, let's see if we can find it. You'll be able to take the first quiz as many times as you'd like, but you'll be able to take every other quiz only one time. So they really are more like true quizzes. You'll have ample time. I think it's a half an hour for five questions. So you have tons of time for those quizzes, but you will be able to take, after the first one, you'll be able to take them only once, okay? The rest of the syllabus just talks about the nature of um, online classes in general. And uh, then if you have any problems. Now, you may never have used uh, the Accessibility Office. Um, 
but we live in uncertain times. Uh, my recommendation is as soon as something comes up, if you get sick, hopefully you all stay healthy throughout the semester, but if you get sick and if it's going to impact your ability to uh, keep up with the daily material, contact me as soon as possible and I will recommend you contact the Accessibility Office also if it's very serious. Sometimes we can just say, oh, it's a couple days. I can help you and we can get you something turned in. But if you come to me at the end of the semester and say, oh, I missed exam number three because blah, 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 whatever it might be, at that point it's just too late. You need to contact me as soon as you know that there is an issue, okay, so we can take care of that. An additional thing, this is online. Read this material just so you're familiar with it. It's an online course, but you still need to keep up. You're not going to be able to do everything retroactively near the end of the semester. It's not a good way to learn things anyway. Also, summer terms, by their very nature, are rather rapid and they come quick, so you do need to keep up. If you uh, just slack off a day or two in the uh, fall or spring, it's not as big of a deal because you, you, things don't come so fast. But if you do it here in the summer, you're going to get behind very, very quickly. So please uh, um, keep up. And again, because it is online, you need to make sure you have a good, um, robust internet connection. If not, contact the school, see what options are there. They do have some options to either help you with your um, uh, at-home one or it can give you resources for that may be uh, available in via other avenues. If there's a technical issue, please contact me as soon as possible. Again, I'll try and check frequently throughout the weekdays. Um, again, if we catch it ahead of time, you we can often take care of it. For instance, if you take the quiz the day it's posted on the syllabus, like today, for tomorrow's quiz, if you take it on Friday and you have a technical issue, let me know. I will be able to reset it. Uh, and then you can often, if it is really a, a technical issue, I can check that through Blackboard. Um, I can then reset it and you can take it and you have time. But if you're putting it off until the very last moment it's due and then have a technical issue, that's just kind of, you know, a risk you run. And so I try to give ample time so that we can avoid any of those uh, major technical issues. Okay, so that's the syllabus. Read over it. Contact me if you have any questions or, or are uncertain about anything that's on the syllabus. Okay, so let's look over the other uh, resources that you have. In the daily links folder, you have broken down by uh, units, all of the material you need for each day. Now, I'm going through these and updating, making sure everything is correct. So some of them you won't be able to see. I'll be able to see them here. But for the first day, you've got that available right now. And the others will be coming up um, later today and, and uh, throughout the rest of the week. So a folder for each day. So today is Thursday, July 9th. And listed in that folder, one through seven things you need to do today, are all the things that you need to do for the course. So the first one is watch this video. That's hopefully the link you clicked on or you clicked on the link in the announcement uh, to watch this video. And number two, read the textbook. Now, when it says read for the textbook, I don't uh, think it's valuable for most students to read it in a ton of detail, spend a lot of time learning it, but you probably should skim over it. I always have students ask, do I need the textbook? And the answer is, not really, because every single question on exams, on quizzes, we do go over in worksheets or in the videos that you have here, the lectures. Uh, we go over all of the material. However, the book is incredibly helpful. If you will skim over, maybe not read in, a, in complete detail, but skim over the textbook chapters prior to um, watching the lectures for those classes, for those, uh, that material, you'll be mu that much more prepared. In addition, the book is a great resource if you're uncertain about something, want to review something, need to go back over things. So I highly recommend the textbook, but you don't need it. Um, you can, I think, rent it for twenty or thirty dollars. You know, get a video, uh, uh, a version of it. There's also a first edition. The newest one is the second edition, and the first edition works pretty much the same as the second edition. You might have to look at the chapter titles rather than the chapter numbers when we're looking at the reading assignments. But for the most part. The second edition works the same as the first edition. Okay, so that's my um, stand on the textbook, and and again, very very helpful, but not absolutely required. Okay, so for each of these videos, there is a corresponding PowerPoint lecture. So when it says watch video for unit 1.1, you have the PowerPoint posted here. Though there's 1.1, and you can download those, make notes, print them out if you really want to. However you want to do that. 
those are there for you. You don't need to use the PowerPoints, but many students like to have them there. So they are there if you'd like. In addition, for each unit, I have posted a student learning outcome. The SLOs here in this folder are a basically an outline of all of the material for that unit. And so it will tell you what you need to know, um, give you things in bold or definitions you need to know. If you use these as a guideline while you're going through the units, taking notes, as a guideline while you're preparing for the exams, if you know the material on these student learning outcomes, then you will be really, really well prepared for the exams. So that they are basically there to serve as a guide, as an outline for you, for the material that you need to know for the course. There are readings assigned throughout the semester. It's a little heavier at the beginning of the semester as we get going, but most of them are rather short readings. So they are listed in the daily links, but in addition, you have them here. So for example, if you go to today's daily links uh, for July 9th, you will see a link to these two papers. You can also access them through the readings folder here, but you'll see a link. These are either Word documents or PDFs, and those are assigned on the day. They'll be there throughout the semester. You can go back to them if you want. On days where there is a reading assignment, and these are also listed, in fact, let's take a look here at the calendar. These are all listed on the calendar. So the calendar is simply a, a PDF of a day by day everything that's due. And so the, either the daily links folder uh, will tell you what's due if you click on it, but if you want to see everything in kind of a large format together, you've got it all listed here. Okay. So it'll tell you the, you know, the lectures that you need to look at, which are posted there. It tells you the reading assignments for that day. Um, if it says CH1, that's from the textbook, so chapter one from the textbook, and then our two shorter reading assignments posted as Word documents and PDFs. And it'll also tell you what's due that day, so you can plan ahead if you want to. But again, as long as you keep up and use the daily links folder every day, that will make sure you don't miss any material also. So I try to make it as easy as possible with multiple places for you to, to look, go to and look for whatever you find most convenient so you don't miss any material. Okay. So for today, you'll want to read paper one and paper two. They're rather short. Then you'll want to answer the reading questions. And again, you can find the reading questions, the link to doing that. Let's just show you a quick example. Uh, either in the daily links or in the announcement for the reading questions that will be posted uh, automatically as the reading questions are posted. So you come here and you say, oh, look, I'm at reading questions. Each of the reading questions will consist of just two open-ended questions. So why did Dobjansky claim nothing in biology makes sense except in light of, of evolution? You put your answer here. doesn't need to be in-depth. A sentence, two sentences. If you feel inspired to write a little bit more, that's great. As long as you're writing something relevant and trying, you'll get full credit for it. So your answer goes here. Question number two, again, only two, what is Gould's solution for reconciling silence, science and religion? Basically, he uses the concept of separate magisteria. And then I ask you if you agree with that or not. Again, a sentence or two, doesn't need to be a lot of detail. If you are doing it and not putting random things there, you'll get full credit for it. So once you're done, you save and submit as you would do with any quiz, and boom, that's done. Now these reading questions will need to be completed on the day that they are listed. So for quizzes, you have one extra day. For exams, uh, they're also on the day they are listed. So if you miss that, uh, it'll just be your one dropped one. Please keep up either through the course calendar or for the daily links folder so you don't miss any of those reading questions. You want to do them all because, again, as long as you put just a little bit of effort into them, you get full credit for those reading questions. So you don't want to miss more than one of those. If you miss one, it will be dropped and won't impact your grade. But after that, it will start to have an influence on your grade. Okay? So the remaining folders are just here for your, your uh, use worksheet. The first worksheet will appear later today. Here, it's not due. Well, let's look at the calendar. Uh, duh, 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 I guess I went. Let's go back. Okay. So, uh, for the calendar, I guess it's probably just as easy to do this. Yeah, the first worksheet is not due until uh, a week from uh the starting day of the course. So, and you'll turn those in online. So when you do that, there will be a, uh, an assignment. You just save it as a Word document. 
as a PDF or as a JPEG, however you want to do that, and attach it to that assignment and make sure you submit it by that day so you don't get any points off for being late. Okay. Quizzes, as mentioned earlier, will appear in this folder. Uh, the key to those quizzes will appear after the availability date ends. Uh, exams will appear here in this folder. There will also be a link and an announcement that appears on the day of the exam. And as we get a little bit closer to the first exam, I'll, I'll, I'll post an announcement with that information. Exams are all multiple choice, true, false, matching. They'll be administered online. You'll have an hour and a half for 50 questions. So really, it is a remarkable amount of time for that. It's about what you'd get in class, uh, but most students don't use all of it. But I find what happens, maybe kind of counterintuitively, is that for online courses, because you have so much material available, you can look at your book, you can look over your notes. You know, Basically, I don't have any way to police you for online exams. So it's, they're almost like open book, open note, open neighbor. Um, and you have an hour and a half. And so really, you have a lot of time you should have ample time if you're trying to look up every single example that, or I'm sorry every single answer to every question you may run out of time but an hour and a half is ample time to complete those exams the additional resources folder is just where I post things that you may need we have an evolution simulator uh, a website that we will be using uh, at the beginning here and a little bit throughout the semester uh, you'll you'll get those referred to you have the zoom meeting room also with a link here um, so if you need to log on, I'll put an announcement also uh, with that link. I believe it's also in the syllabus, so you, you shouldn't have trouble finding that room. And again, we can set, schedule an appointment to meet there uh, digitally, or if you want to log in on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings at 7 p.m. This is, I have a lot of students who have trouble figuring out how to estimate their grade. So this is just simply a document where you can do that at any point in the semester. I don't estimate and uh, calculate grades till I have all the scores because they can change. But if you are one of those people who just has to know where you are in the course, um, you can use this. So all you need to do is follow what it says on the syllabus. So if you have two exams, you take the two of them and, and average them. Let's say you have an 86 average on those exams. Uh, there we go, 86. Uh, let's, well, I'll double check this. It might have when it came, got transferred over. Oh, maybe it was something I did. Let's try and reopen it. I'll double check and make sure. But anyway, you can enter if you just calculate. You know, Remember, for quizzes, you drop your lowest score. Um, oh, maybe because I shut that and didn't do enable editing. Um, so 86. Average, drop your lowest score for the quizzes, figure out what the percentage is on the remaining 92. And this will estimate where you are at that point in the course. And again, remember that will change as all the material, uh, the rest of the material becomes done. So you can look and figure out where you are. Hopefully you don't get a 55 on those reading questions. If you just do them, you'll have 100. So you can figure out exactly where you are in the course based on um, uh, those scores. Okay. That should cover everything for your course orientation. If there's anything that's uncertain about you need to clarify, um, don't hesitate to contact me. Again, I check emails multiple times throughout uh, the weekday, and I'll check them a couple times over the weekend. So we should be in fairly good shape there.